I would do a first trimester either like a what to expect in the first trimester video because obviously I didn't have my YouTube channel till Joel was about three months old so I never did any pregnancy content or anything like that on this channel um, so I always said that with my next baby I want to do all of those kind of videos and really document it and it will also be like my sort of diary to look back on um, which will be really nice because this is 99.9% .9 going to be my last pregnancy so I might as well make the most of it. So I am going to do this I guess kind of like a little vlog style video and we will start off with today um, I'm five weeks and four days pregnant today um, so we're just going to start from obviously five weeks pregnant how I'm feeling this week next week I'll do six weeks pregnant seven eight nine and onwards from there as long as hopefully this pregnancy continues and everything is okay and then obviously this video will go live after my 12 week scan at the end of the first trimester and um, so my oldest baby is 14 months old I still call him my baby I'm not really ready to let that go yet and that's why I've been so emotional about this pregnancy because it's happened exactly a year before I wanted it to happen which is making me think that it's a blessing and this is obviously my time so if you watched my um, finding out I was pregnant video I found out a couple of days ago like two days ago now um, and before that I wanted to say I really had any symptoms like with Joel I found out really really early because we were trying so I did a test even before I'd missed my period I think I was about two days um, before it was about two days before my period was due but I just knew because my boobs were so 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 sore um, and that was like the first sign for me from literally about one or two weeks pregnant and I also had a tiny bit of implantation um, spotting literally just for like an hour with Joel and then I had a random episode of diarrhea sorry this video will be a little bit TMI um, which you kind of expect if you're watching anything pregnancy related um, so I did have a one episode of diarrhea with Joel which I guess is when implantation happened because it would have been around that time which I've read is very very common um, so with this pregnancy boobs completely different like basically we would have conceived about three days before we flew out to the south of France to see my parents um, so I would have been pregnant the whole time we were there and wouldn't have known. I did notice towards the end of the holiday that um, a few times when I'd picked Joel up, I kind of felt like my nipple on one side was a little bit bruised, but my boobs were not sore at all. And they're not, they don't really feel bigger. Um, occasionally, last thing at night before I get into bed, they feel a little bit bigger, but nothing like compared to the first time. Um, and they're not veiny like they were the first time either. So yeah, didn't really have any of that. Um, I was due my periods if my sort of dates were right because I track my cycles on natural cycles. So I would have been due my period um, about a week after we got back from holiday and it didn't happen. So obviously if you watched my pregnancy, like find out I was pregnant video, um, you'd I've talked about like how my periods were never regular before I had Joel, um, hence why I went on the pill. Um, so it took us like four months to conceive him because I just didn't know where I ever was in my cycle so I, we didn't really know when to like try um but this time it just kind of happened so it's the first time that my periods have ever ever been regular like ever in my life so it's I, my cycles are a lot easier to track now so my period would have been due about a week after we got back from holiday again still didn't really have any symptoms and then it got to, so it would have been due on around Thursday or the Wednesday or Thursday, and then it got to the weekend. And I, that's the first time I kind of thought, oh, I haven't come on yet. Um, but I didn't really think anything of it because I just thought maybe I'm having like an off month with my period or something. There's absolutely no way I thought I would be pregnant at all. So didn't even think about doing a test, just kind of left it. Then it was the following Wednesday, so I would have been a week late by this point, and we were going to a baby class that morning like we always do, and I literally felt like I was about to come on my period, so like the crampy, like really low, sort of heavy feeling. Um, there's a difference between, for me, there was a slight difference between normal pregnancy cramps and cramps when you are literally just about to come on your period, and I felt like I was literally just about to come on my period. So I put a um, tampon in and went to the baby class, fully expecting to come on within the next sort of hour or so. 
Um, and I remember driving there and sort of praying that I didn't come on during the baby class because I was wearing like beige shorts and I thought that's not going to be a vibe if I leak everywhere. <laughs> yeah, got to the end of the day, suddenly realised that there was still no period. Um, and then I kind of spoke to two of my mum friends about it. Um, and I said, guys, I'm, think I'm like a week late for my period, I think. I haven't really been paying much attention, but I'm pretty sure I'm like a week late. And they were like, oh my God, just do a test. So I said, I'm going to wait till the weekend because I might have got my dates wrong and then I'm going to do a test. So I waited till Saturday night and then did one. So yeah, like I said, till that point. So I would have been five weeks pregnant when I found out or just like five weeks and a couple of days. Um, so I would literally only had period cramps, not as much as the first time at all. They were really quite strong the first time, I think, because your uterus has got more like stretching to do. But this time they were just kind of like crampy for like a day or so. And that was it. Um, bruised so my nipples felt bruised on and off not all the time but my boobs were not sore like the first time and yeah just felt a little bit sicky yesterday which is the day after I found out so I don't know whether that was me getting paranoid because I just found out and obviously it was the day after and I was in a lot of shock um or whether I did actually feel sick but I just felt like mildly car sick so when I looked at my phone I kind of felt a bit like oh I just need to lay still for a minute and maybe not look at my phone um, and it was the first time that I hadn't really fancied anything in particular to eat so me and my friend were walking around co-op last night getting some snacks and I literally walked around the store about 10 times because I did not know what I wanted I just didn't fancy anything and then I was like I really fancy pineapple and I never eat pineapple. I think the last time I ate pineapple was when I was nearing my due date with Joel and I was trying to get myself to go into labour because I read it's one of the things. Um, that was the last time I ate pineapple. I never walk around a shop and think I fancy some pineapple. So I'm guessing that was like obviously a pregnancy thing. Um, but that's literally it. So like I said, I'm five weeks, four days today. Um, Actually, I forgot to mention that I did drop off, I dropped off on the sofa in the afternoon twice in the past week. One time before I found out and then yesterday, the first day after I found out, I did have a little snooze, like a 20 minute, half an hour snooze on the sofa while Joel was napping, which I never do because I'm so busy and I just, I just felt so exhausted in the afternoon. So a little bit of that, T felt a tiny bit nauseous yesterday, but nothing major, a lot of bloating yesterday and that was about it. So like I said, for me, the second pregnancy symptoms so far haven't been as extreme as the first, but it's week six on Thursday this week. I hit week six, the dreaded week six, and I'm pretty sure that was where my sickness fully kicked in last time. I was never actually sick. My gag reflex tried to be sick so many times, but my stomach stayed strong and I was never actually sick. I couldn't stand any smells. I couldn't go in my fridge for about six weeks. Um, and I had 24 hour nausea all day every day for about three weeks and then it moved to mainly just the evenings at about nine weeks pregnant and then it went completely at about 13 weeks which is really really lucky um so the six week to the nine week mark were horrendous and they felt like a lot it felt like a lot longer than three weeks and I just remember just not knowing how I was ever going to get through the day at work I had to snack constantly and that's probably why I put on so much weight um, and I basically just lived on beige food so I am waiting and fully expecting for that to kick in and I'm not looking forward to it so wish me luck guys I will catch you next week with a six week update and just please, please, please pray for me that I don't have my head down a toilet somewhere because I now have a toddler to look after. It's not like my first pregnancy where I can just prioritise myself and just take a day off work and chill on the sofa. It's not going to work like that this time. So wish me luck, guys. Let's hope I don't get the sickness, but I really, really think I will. My mum said she got it worse the second time round. And oh my God, I'm just... Can we just fast forward to 12 weeks, please? That would be amazing. Not that I want this pregnancy to go really fast because it'll probably be my last one, but oh, first trimester. Hey guys, so I have got the six week first trimester update for you. Um, and things have changed like a little bit this week, but I'm still not really, really bad. But I just feel like every time I say that, I'm absolutely jinxing it. So just keeping everything crossed. I don't feel absolutely horrendous in a week or so's time. Um, 
So I am, it's now Friday evening and I'm six plus one today, roughly, that's my estimate. Um, so yeah, so obviously I hit, I've just realised I've got a massive spot there, which again is one of the symptoms I've had. My skin hasn't been great, but it has not been as bad as when I was pregnant with Joel in the first trimester. And then after that it was great. Um, but yeah, it hasn't been as bad as last time. Just a few little spots here and there. Um, I look dog rough. I've just done bedtime. Um, so Joel is in bed now. Steve's working late and I am covered in toothpaste and all sorts. So yeah, I need to go off and wash my hair in a minute. Um, but basically my nausea has started in the last few days, which I really didn't want again. Um, but at the moment it's not as bad as it was last time. So it's kind of, it like comes in waves and I don't really have many smell aversions um, at all like I did last time. And I don't really have any food aversions yet. I kind of fancy stuff and some days I don't fancy certain things, but I wouldn't say like anything would make me gag or throw up if I ate it. Um, so at the moment that's good because my sickness hit full on, like dead on six weeks or just before last time. So at the moment it's manageable. We've been out for the day today. We've been really, really busy and I've been like, okay, I've just had to, like when I need to eat, I have to eat. I can't just like ignore it and carry on shopping or carry on doing what I'm doing. I have to eat. Otherwise I will probably get like really sick. Um, but as long as I eat or when I need to nap, I'll try and nap in the afternoon when Joel's napping just for like 20 minutes, half an hour. And that seems to keep the nausea, like control the nausea. Um, I think it helps this time. I know obviously it's harder having a child to run around after, but it also helps that I'm not at work all day, every day, because I think that like in my first pregnancy I was, and that freaked me out. Just like being in an office full of people with loads of smells, people would have coffee, people would have smelly food. And that like really stressed me out because obviously I didn't really want everyone to know. And it would just make me gag all the time. And it's just easier being at home more. And obviously I am still at work two or three days a week, but it's easier than being there every day and having to hide it. So I don't have to hide it as much as I did last time. Um, but yeah, so my boobs are like tender on and off. They're not really that bad at the moment. My nausea has gone for the minute. We'll see if it comes back a bit later because it did yesterday evening. Um, but yeah, my nausea was kind of worse like this morning and then it's kind of got better since I had an afternoon nap. Um, what else has happened this week? Oh, I've got really bad like congestion, which apparently is like pregnancy related rhinitis, which I read about. So every morning I'm waking up really congested in my nose and I don't have a cold, like none of us have colds. So it's definitely a pregnancy thing. Um, it's like cramping on and off, nothing major. Um, I woke up feeling rough this morning, not sick. I felt really groggy, almost like I had a really bad cold again. I felt awful. I couldn't get out of bed for like the first sort of half an hour or so. Um, and I actually filmed a clip this morning to kind of show you like how raw it sort of was. I wanted to film it in that moment, but I watched it back and I was like, I cannot put my face on the screen looking like that. I looked awful. I looked so pale and drained. I think I was just really dehydrated as well. Um, cause that's the other thing I'm like, the thirst has been a lot more than I'm a lot th more thirsty than what I usually am. And I'm terrible at drinking enough water. So I think I just didn't drink enough water yesterday. And obviously when you're pregnant, like a lot of stuff's going to the baby. So you do need to drink more. And I'm terrible at remembering to do that. Um, before I found out I was pregnant, I was drinking a lot more just cause I didn't know I was pregnant and I kind of felt the need to. Um, but it's weird. Now I found out, I just kind of forget to drink enough. So I need, I must remember to do that um and I've also got to the stage where I don't leave the house um without snacks and a drink for myself in my bag because I just know that I'm gonna need it whereas normally I would not bother I'd have something for Joel and I wouldn't have anything for myself but I know that I need to start thinking about that now I don't want to be out and get caught out and feel sick or faint and just need to eat right now and not be able to get anything um so yeah I've got to that point where I'm doing that now um, and that's about it this week, really, guys. I'm hoping that the nausea doesn't get much worse. We have booked an early private scan for Wednesday. It's now Friday, so I've got a few days, another few days yet. Um, but we did one with Joel, and it, I just think 12 weeks is so long to wait. Obviously, it's only been about six weeks, so I'll have to wait for my 12 week scan because I found out so late because we weren't trying. Um, but still, I really like to break it up with a private scan. I just think it's nice. Um, 
and yeah I just couldn't stand the thought of getting to the 12 week scan and finding out at that point that something was wrong I'd rather just know earlier um, and because I haven't had as many symptoms and they keep sort of dying off really suddenly it just I just had a really paranoid day the other day and I'm also at the point where every time I was the same with Joel every time I go to the toilet I'm checking for blood and I know that everyone is like that in pregnancy but I'm yeah I'm definitely at that point now um so yeah it's obviously an anxious time the first trimester I'm not like this in the second or third trimester I chill out a lot more um and I think once you can start feeling the baby moving it's reassuring as well but the first trimester is just oh I hate it I always hate it um I don't want to wish it away because like I said this will probably be my last pregnancy but oh, I just want to get to 12 weeks now got another six weeks to go joy um but yeah, so anyway, private scan on Wednesday. I don't know whether to include that in this vlog or do it in a separate vlog, but I will probably include it in this vlog because it's just easier. And obviously this is all about the first trimester. So I just want to take you along with us and share our first trimester experience in this video, really. So I didn't just want to do a sit down symptoms video. I just think it's better to do it vlog style week by week. So you can see sort of it's more raw and real and you can see it happening and how I'm feeling and stuff like that so I think we'll probably take you along with us on Wednesday so that will be the next clip that you see and then my seven week update will be after that because I will be six weeks and six days at the scan I think but they'll obviously let me know on Wednesday how far along I am so pray for me that everything is okay and I know you're not going to see this before the scan you're going to see it way 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 after um but it makes me feel better talking to you guys anyway so yeah, let's see um, what the rest of week six has in store for me and I will catch up with you guys on Wednesday when we are on the way to the scan. Morning guys, it's finally Wednesday and we are on our way to our early scan. Here he is. So yeah, our appointment's actually in like 15 minutes. So I'm hoping we'll get there on time. I literally feel so sick today and I was awake for two hours in the middle of the night. My sleep has been absolutely appalling. Obviously, when I hit seven weeks, which should be tomorrow, I will give you guys a seven week update, but that's just an inkling of how I am feeling right now. I was a bit too smug that I didn't have any symptoms and yeah, I definitely shouldn't have been. Um, but yeah, we are just on our way there now. So we will catch you guys when we are in the scan. I don't think he has a clue what that is. <laughs> Six weeks, two days. Okay, it's a bit further back than I thought, but. Do you want to hear the heartbeat? Oh. Does it sound okay? Yeah, it's pretty fine. That's good. Excuse the empty wardrobe in the background. We are currently um, in the process of changing our wardrobe, which I've wanted to do for so long. Um, but yeah, we had the scan this morning. Everything looks really good, as you could probably see. Um, we heard the little heartbeat, which was really lovely. So I do feel a little bit better now, um, but I think I'm still gonna have that little bit of paranoia till the 12 week scan. Um, so I thought I was six plus six today. She's actually dated me at six plus three, um, which isn't too much different, it's fine. I literally, by the way, have no idea why my camera looks blurry today. Um, I've been napping because I do not feel well at all this afternoon. I think my sickness is really gonna kick in. I've got that feeling at the back of my throat that I could literally just gag at any second. Um, Steve's just gone to McDonald's to get me some nuggets because that's literally all I fancy right now. It'll probably make me feel sick tomorrow. They made me feel sick yesterday, but that's what I want today. So we're going to go with it. Um, but yeah, she dated me at six plus three, which is fine. It's just a little bit annoying because <sighs> three extra days of sickness. <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember like last time it kind of subsided a lot around nine weeks i'm really hoping that'll be the case again this time but who knows i've actually taken next week off as holiday because it'll be like week seven to eight and i vaguely remember that was my worst week for sickness last time again not actually sick but just gagging at smells just feeling awful um and i don't cope with it very well when i've got to get up and do stuff 
Um, so I've booked my days that I would be working office holiday because Joel will be in childcare so I can just literally just like stay in bed all day if I want to. Which, as a mum, you know that's such a waste of a day when there's so much you could be getting on with. But I'm just going to see how I feel. And I think, to be honest, I've just got to think about myself for once and just rest if I need to. Um, but yeah, I will be back with a seven week update in a couple of days to let you know how I am feeling. Um, I'm hoping the sickness will kind of stay on this level and then tail off and not get any worse because I'm feeling pretty rough right now. Um... But yeah, I will catch you guys in a couple of days. Hello guys, we have made it to seven weeks pregnant. Um, so I am back with my little seven week update today. Um, I am, what am I today? I'll be seven plus three if I'm going by the dates on my private scan that I had last week. So how am I feeling this week? I actually feel marginally better than last week during the day but evenings I'm a shell, I'm good for nothing um so just forget forget even speaking to me in the evening because I my nausea in the evening is something else like I literally feel so sick and I just end up getting into bed so early um because like I'm normally someone, I'm not someone that goes to bed before nine o'clock. Like I don't normally go to bed before 11 o'clock slash half 11 some nights. I'm such a late bedtime person because I like to make the most of my time in the evenings once Joel is in bed. Um, So, you know, when I'm pregnant, because I'll just be going to bed before nine o'clock and that's probably the only time I do that. Um, So, yeah, I've been doing that. I've been in bed so early and I'm just laying in bed and I'm just like, oh, I need to go and sit by the toilet. I'm literally going to throw up. And I don't, I like manage not to, but it's horrible guys, it's horrible. I remember I did have this last time actually, but I almost feel like it's worse this time. It probably isn't, um, because overall my sickness is better this time. Like I'm not feeling sick all day, every day this week, like I did for about three weeks on end last time. But it probably isn't worse in the evenings this time. It's probably just that I've forgotten how bad it was last time. I don't, I don't know. Um, so that's where I'm at with my sickness like I said last week week six to seven was definitely my worst week that was when the sickness first kicked in I was feeling rough like all day every day and I still do like it's still dull like nausea in the background sort of thing um but it's not like mornings are probably my best time now it's not as bad um as it was last week or my last pregnancy at this point so I'm a bit surprised um but yeah, I mean, I'm not complaining at all because it's it's very manageable. Like compared to what some people have, it's very manageable. And compared to last time, it's very manageable. So that's where I'm at with the sickness. My boobs are really, really sore this week. Probably last week and this week um, is when it really kicked in. I didn't really have sore boobs before that, which I did with Joel. So that was different. Um, my food aversion. So last week I would want like one particular thing per day and then the next day it would gross me out and I'd want something completely different um this week I just don't ever really fancy anything at all like I just don't want anything I have to force myself to eat and I hate it because I love my food normally and like sorry I'm really burpy as well lunch is normally like the highlight of my day I love I love my like my picky lunches and stuff like that just don't fancy anything probably the only thing I ever fancy is grapes I try and force some beige food down me or whatever like things that aren't gonna completely gross me out but I'm even getting sick of like the thought of bread and potatoes is making me feel sick now so I'm kind of running out of options and it's a real battle I honestly dread like meal times every single day because I just feel like I'm living off takeaways at the moment because I can't physically cook I can't stand the smell and I was, like I said, I was the same last time. Um, if Steve cooks something, I basically cry because I just can't stand it. It makes me feel so ill, especially at dinner time. Um, and I'm just spending so much money on food, but we can't do a food shop for me because I don't know what I'm going to want every day. So if I do a food shop, like the next day, half the stuff we've bought will gross me out and I won't want it. It's just a nightmare, guys. Just honestly bring on 12 weeks. I'm so fed up already. And it's only, I've only been feeling like this for two weeks. Um, I was like this last time, but like I said, it, I, I do feel like I'm getting a bit better quite quickly this time. So that's really positive. 
Um, but I've also got the other thing I'm finding this week is I've got a lot of numb guilt because I just can't. I feel like I, can't, I don't want to do anything with Joel. And my me and my mum friends were talking in our group WhatsApp yesterday. They were saying about going to the farm on Friday, which is what we always do. And I said, I'm really sorry. I don't think I'm going to be able to go. I just don't feel like doing anything. And that's normally like the highlight of my week. I love I love our little mum dates on a Friday. Had a baby class this morning. It just felt like a shell of myself. I was kind of sat there like not massively socialising with my friends. And I was just a bit like quiet um and like I said baby class doing like days out to the farm with Joel I love doing stuff like that normally and at the moment I just couldn't think of anything worse and it's really upsetting me and I'm just feeling so guilty about it like really really guilty about it um but I know that this won't be forever hopefully another couple of weeks and then I'll feel like I've got more energy again but at the moment I physically do not have the energy to be running around after a toddler at a farm or running around after a toddler at all really um and I'm normally quite a get up and go person and I'm not one of those mums that can leave him all day to play on his own um I will obviously do that if I have to get stuff done but if I did that all day every day I'd feel so guilty not that there's anything wrong with it but I just for me personally I just feel guilty that I'm not interacting with him especially because I work as well I feel like on my days off I need to be interacting with him and he's just not getting that necessarily from me at the moment um I was trying to put him to bed last night and he wanted an extra story and I was literally on the verge of throwing up and I had to go and lie down and I had to say I'm really sorry you're only having one story tonight and then that made me feel bad as well honestly I need to like I need to man up he had he had my attention at bedtime I need to man up and stop putting so much pressure on myself um but yeah last week Steve was off work and he did a lot with Joel um which well I kind of just took it easy um on my days off work but I felt really guilty about that as well I just yeah I'm um, obviously I'm really lucky to have had the chance to have even laid down for a day in my first trimester being a parent um so I was blessed to have that but yeah I'm just feeling a little bit guilty at the moment especially because obviously if you've watched my other videos about this pregnancy or my finding out I'm pregnant video um you'll see that this was kind of this is happening like a year earlier than what we planned um it was complete a complete shock and um yeah I just thought I had a bit more time with Joel like just us two so I feel like I need to give him as much time as I can now like before May um because time is going to go so fast once this first trimester's over I know it will um so yeah like I said hopefully a few more weeks and then I'll have the energy to do stuff with him again but I'm just feeling so guilty this week so so yeah if you're pregnant with your second at the moment and you're feeling guilty as well or just like like you're a rubbish mum at the moment you're not alone because I literally can relate um just trying to think of other symptoms I've had this week Joel's just napping so this is normally my time that I will come and nap so he is now dropped to one nap a day so he'll go down straight after his lunch about half 12 for about two hours um, and this is when I will come and probably sleep for about an hour of that if I can. Um, my house is a mess. I'm trying to tell myself that the housework can wait. I remember last time I was pregnant, um, I didn't do a lot of cleaning in the first trimester. My house was just a dump. Um, I was paying a cleaner to come in and do it for me because I couldn't stand the smells. So, um, yeah, I might, I might actually do that again just to maybe get a couple of one-off cleans or something like that just to keep on top of it um because smells are making me heave I'm having to even wear a mask when I'm changing Joel's nappy now it's it's that bad um but I can go in the fridge this time and I couldn't go in the fridge for about six weeks last time without gagging so that's positive <laughs> um yeah sorry I'm rambling on a little bit but this is obviously like a diary of the first trimester and my feelings and stuff I just realized I've got eyebrow pencil on my headboard so I'm gonna need to get some upholstery cleaner on that in a minute um yeah I'm trying to think if any other symptoms I've had oh yeah so for the past two weeks I've had what I had last time every sorry this is TMI but if you're watching pregnancy videos it, it's always going to be TMI guys um but every morning I get um loose stools um probably like once or twice and then I'm fine for the rest of the day um but it's just hormones I feel like that's morning sickness without actually being sick it's like the other sorry that's really gross um but like I said, it's just hormonal and I had it last time and by the time I got to 12 weeks, it, I was absolutely fine. It had gone. Um, so I just have some peppermint tea and that seems to like settle my stomach. Um, so yeah, I'm getting that every morning. 
I've had a dull like headache on and off actually um and I still have to go for a wee in the middle of the night which I don't normally when I'm not pregnant um so yeah and actually I've just had my lunch so I've just come up for a nap about doing this update first and I've had to unbutton my jeans because <laughs> I am feeling bloated to say the least but I have got skinny jeans on today sorry I'm so burpy um I have got skinny jeans on today I haven't worn them for a while but they are definitely my size and they fit me fine um but they're just getting a little bit tight around the belly already and we're nearly eight weeks so it's a little bit scary I, I feel like it's true what they say you um you show earlier with your second I'm already feeling quite um bloated or my belly just feels different um so yeah we'll see what I'm like at 12 weeks but I heard from one of my friends at baby class earlier that her friend looked about five months pregnant when she was 12 weeks so yeah I'm a bit bit worried about that um but it is what it is I loved having a bump to be fair last time so I guess if I can miss the is she pregnant or just fat stage um which I seems to be in from about 12 weeks to about 21 weeks last time if I can miss that stage this time and just get a bump then I'm not complaining <laughs> uh, I will catch you guys when we get to eight weeks I'm actually looking forward to being eight weeks even nine weeks it just sounds more like proper doesn't it like six seven weeks still sounds like really really early I feel like once you hit the eight week mark it's like oh my god only like four weeks till the scan and it just seems like you're actually getting somewhere at that point um so yeah, I will catch you guys next week with my eight week update. Have an amazing week. Not that you're going to be watching this for a long time. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go take a nap now because I really, really need to. Otherwise, my nausea gets just unmanageable. Um, and I will catch you guys next week. Mwah. Hello guys, the eight week update is coming to you from my car um, because I am literally just parked outside the maternity hospital because I've got my first midwife appointment today. Um, it literally feels so strange being back here. Obviously I didn't think I would be back here so soon. And last time we were here, we were literally taking Joel home from hospital after I'd had him so it's very very mixed emotions being back here but it is nice very exciting um nothing too exciting for the appointment today it's literally just that early blood test that you have around eight weeks pregnant which I had last time um so I'm just going to do that today I've actually just popped out of work um it's a Saturday I think I'm like eight eight plus one today but I have just popped out of work for this appointment because it is my Saturday to work today, um, annoyingly. So luckily my manager isn't in on Saturday, so I was able to just kind of like go without anyone sort of questioning anything um because I still haven't told him yet. Not that he would mind, but I just like haven't told him yet. Um so yeah, I'm here for that. I've actually arrived 20 minutes early because normally parking's a nightmare, and I thought Saturday like everyone will be at home, so there will literally be nowhere to park. But actually, I've managed to get parked straight away, so I'm just kind of sat here. I might just go in. Um, but yeah, my symptoms this week. I did feel quite sick this morning. I still got like bad tummy every morning, um, but I definitely feel like it's easing even more. Um, evenings still quite nauseous nothing major to update you guys on this week to be honest that was different from last week just that my nausea seems to be a lot more on and off um rather than constant so that's really positive and obviously i'm nine weeks i'll be nine weeks on the next update so i'm hoping i'll be able to tell you that it's completely gone during the day like it was last time um but we will see and my boobs are really really sore still this week or even like maybe a little bit worse so yeah, I was a little bit too smug about that in the beginning. Um, they are quite sore, to be honest. But hopefully, again, that will go soon. But I would take that over sickness any day. So, yeah, I really don't mind that at all. Um, and my breathlessness is still very much there. I don't remember having it this, this bad in the first trimester last time. It didn't really happen until my bump got quite big. And, I like, it was all up here. Um, but, yeah, it's fine. I'm sure it will go after the first trimester. I read it's just due to increase, like, progesterone in your first trimester. It makes you breathless. Um... So yeah, I'm like even breathless now, like talking to you. So yeah, I'm hoping that will go in the next few weeks. But yeah, I'm going to probably go in now because I'm absolutely boiling in this car. Um, and I will catch you guys possibly like I won't film in there, but I might catch you in a second when I'm walking in. Um, if not, I'll catch you next week for my nine week update. <laughs> Hello 
guys it has actually been nearly two weeks since I last spoke to you and I've just been so busy and to be honest did anything really change I did say to you in the last update that I wouldn't really do a nine week update unless anything really changed um it kind of did and it kind of didn't so I think I did an eight week update last time I've been so busy I just don't even remember um I think it was an eight week update but I literally did it as I turned eight weeks so actually the rest of week eight it did change a little bit um so I would actually say week eight was probably my worst week for the evening sickness and like sorry it's in my hair um the evening sickness and the gagging the gagging was awful especially in the evenings or like when I got hungry so like I said there's certain things that set me off it's Joel's pooey nappies um any smell of like poo in general um which I think is pretty standard even when you're not pregnant but there you go but I'm, I'm usually fine with his nappies um but I'm not at the moment then the fridge still can't stand the fridge now actually and I'm nearly 10 weeks so yeah it's been nearly two weeks since I spoke to you um so the fridge Joel's nappies what else is it I haven't been great with cleaning products although I have just managed to deep clean the kitchen for the first time in three weeks and I mean Steve has been amazing bless him he's been doing so 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 much um but you know I, I'm not being ungrateful at all because I literally wouldn't have managed without him and any mums out there who's who are pregnant and their partner's away or um they are a single parent honestly hats off to you because I, I do not know how you do it with no help um I've had quite a lot of help Steve has like I said been really really good but his standards are not up to mine and please don't think that that's being ungrateful because I'm so grateful like this house is a crap hole at the moment, um, which I hate. It makes me anxious and I don't like it. I like to keep it up together. Um, but it's it would have been a lot more of a crap hole if Steve hadn't been helping and doing stuff. So I'm really grateful to him for that. But I'm sure everyone can relate. Like your husband's standards probably are not the same as yours. Um, so like the kitchen, he will just do basic stuff, whereas I'll actually get in and like scrub the sink so it's sparkling. Um, so I have just managed to do that. And there was just a funny smell in the kitchen. I can't really explain it, like a stale burnt sort of smell. It's probably just my ridiculous sense of smell at the moment. Um, but I have got in there and stuck some Sephora in the sink, left it for like an hour, just cleaned everything. It's literally sparkling in there now. I've even put my candle on so you know I've been cleaning and you know that I'm back into it when I've put my candle on. So yeah, it's great. Obviously, I'd love to do the whole house, but Joel's probably only going to nap for another hour and I really, really need to rest now because we've been out of baby class this morning. Then me and my friend went for lunch um, straight after baby class. So... Um, yeah, it's been a busy one. So we've just walked back from there. I've done the kitchen, he's napping. And now I'm literally just sat here. I've got my blanket. Um, I've literally just been to the shop and bought a whole pack of those. I'm not gonna eat a whole pack of those, she says. Um, but yeah, and also, like I said, I'm 10, I'm 10 weeks in like, like the day after tomorrow. And I just don't know where week nine has gone. It's just gone so fast. I think the three weeks prior to that, while I was feeling at my absolute worst, they went so slowly but actually when I think about it my scan is the week after next and that is just crazy um so it is starting to speed up a bit now and I do kind of still want it to be on fast forward till my scan um because yeah I just I just want to tell everyone now I really really do um so yeah like I said last week week eight was abs absolutely my worst week for evening sickness probably week seven was the worst for daytime sickness um so my nausea is still there very mildly throughout the day but i'm definitely starting to fancy more foods and manage more foods um i'm not having as many takeaways this week still can't really like go in the kitchen and prepare a whole meal that i'm still like not quite there yet um but I managed to have a ready meal at work last night which is the first time in weeks because normally I'll take a ready meal with me to save money um but I've just been ordering takeaway because I can't even go in the kitchen at work just something about kitchens when I'm pregnant I can't my nose can't take them um so yeah I did that at work last night I was quite proud of myself the cleaners were even in there at the time and it stunk of bleach and I was like hold it together you're fine 
um, and my stomach stayed strong and I didn't gag and I was absolutely fine. So I think I'm definitely getting better. Um, my evening sickness is not is nowhere near as bad um, either. I'm definitely not getting through my anti-nausea sweets, um, like little peppermint sweet things that I've got. I'll talk about those in another vlog. I might do like a first trimester essentials vlog. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about those there, but they've been a lifesaver. Honestly, they just take the edge off it when you feel like you're about to gag. Um, I'm definitely not getting through those as much as I was a week or so ago. Um, and I'm just feeling, just definitely starting to feel better, which is the same point as I started feeling better last time. So I just really hope it doesn't come back because it didn't last time. So I'm praying it's exactly the same. Um, and honestly, like girls that have this the whole way through, I just want to give you a huge hug because I just, honestly, it makes me want to cry. I, do, I don't know how you do it. You are, you are absolutely amazing. You really are. Maybe the next time I see you will be for a 12 week update and when we're off to our scan. Um, I just thought I'd pop on and do a quick um, 11 slash 12 week update. I'm 11 weeks. I'm 11 plus, I'm 11 plus one today. You really do forget the second time around it's mental you're kind of like what am i again um but yeah i'm 11 plus one today just going off the private scan that we had again um i've got four more days till my scan which i'm so excited about obviously a bit nervous as well probably not as nervous as with joel because i just think you do chill out a bit the second time um generally anyway i know like it's not the same for everyone for whatever reason but so I think there's always that worry there, even though we've we've seen the heartbeat and I'm still like very much got pregnancy symptoms. Um, there's always going to be a little bit of worry there. Um, but yeah, just to quickly let you know how I'm feeling this week. So I still can't go in the bloody fridge. Um, excuse my language on here. Um, but yeah, I did test it earlier because I'm feeling a lot better during the day. Actually, I did have a couple of days of like still have like dull nausea I would say especially if I don't eat I have to eat like when I need to otherwise I'll feel really sick um but I'm feeling a lot better like even in the evenings as well um so I thought I'd test going in the fridge at lunchtime today big mistake gagged three times was nearly sick I don't know what it is about that fridge but obviously like I said I had it last time as well so I literally don't know what it is but um yeah I can't remember when it went away last time I feel like maybe like 13 14 weeks I could go in the fridge again and then I pretty much had my head stuck in the fridge like cleaning it and scrubbing it because I was absolutely fine just pretty much overnight um and obviously my nesting phase kicked in my energy burst kicked in and I just blitzed the house from top to bottom because it had been a dump so I can't wait to do that again because I've really neglected the house because I've just been feeling so crap um so yeah, can't wait to just have a day just to clean. Steve can take Joel out and this house can just look amazing. Um, but yeah, my, um, so like I said, my, my sickness is like, I really don't want to jinx it because whenever I tell you I'm feeling better, I'll have a really bad few days again. Um, but my sickness, touch wood, is going. It's definitely going. Because um, like I said, in the last, like when I did my 10 week update, I think it was 10 weeks, like last week, um I said that I was feeling better then I had like a bit of a relapse again so yeah I don't want to like get too excited but it seems to be going the same way as it went last time the only thing that's different that I did want to sort of mention um because you guys have probably had it so well, I know obviously your gag reflex is really strong in the first trimester um which is fine I had that last time like brushing my teeth and stuff I will gag a lot but I've been finding this time I'm just like sorry just really burpy as well my gag reflex I'm just gagging like I'll like for no reason so I'll be out for a walk or I'll, it's usually when I'm like chatting to someone quite a lot I just get an overwhelming urge to gag and I didn't have that last time like something had to set it off but this time it's just kind of there and like things aren't really setting it off and it's not even that I feel sick it's just that I need to have like a really good gag but I don't want to because I'm scared that I'll be sick. So it's just like a really horrible situation. Um, and I'm hoping that will just like phase out in the next few weeks. But um can't remember when my gag reflex got better last time. But I feel like it wasn't till about 
15, 16 weeks that I could brush my teeth without gagging. So we'll see. But I'm hoping just like the random gagging that happens when like nothing even sets it off will do one soon because it's really like annoying now. It's just a really annoying symptom that I didn't have last time. So yeah, that's pretty random. Um, and my boobs are still really sore. I'm pretty sure they'd stopped being sore by this point last time. Um, so I'm just having a little, a little feel. Um, they are still quite sore, but it's mainly just in the evenings. So my hormones are obviously still quite high in the evenings and it's like all around the edges. Um, like I said, I'm sure they were okay by this point last time, but they haven't grown as much this time. Like last time they went really big and then by the second trimester, they kind of like deflated again. Um, but this time they haven't really got bigger. Um, they've just been like sore and they're not veiny this time either. They were quite veiny last time. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick 11 week update for you. But yeah, um, and I had my booking in appointment today. Um, which was so strange. It was over the phone, um, I'm guessing because of COVID, like because last time I had it face to face because it was pre-COVID, about six months pre-COVID. So I had it face to face. But yeah, it was over the phone, which is fine. Like, I wasn't mad about it. It's just a, it's just a booking in appointment. I think if it, if it had been a midwife appointment where they like check your bump and listen to heartbeat, I probably would have requested to see someone face to face because I know that you can do that. So if you're getting your appointments over the phone, especially I think especially if you're a first time mum, um, definitely request to see, see someone face to face because I did that with the health visitor after I had Joel because they were just trying to palm the appointments off as phone ones all the time. And yeah, I think me and my friends requested to see them face to face. So they will do it. Um, but yeah, I wasn't mad about the booking appointment being over the phone because um it's just you know it's not an exciting appointment anyway they're just literally going through information with you so there would have been no point me trying to get like get someone to look after joel because he wouldn't have been able to come with me um just to go into the hospital for like half hour 40 minutes so i was quite happy to have that at home over the phone but yeah it took about a half hour 40 minutes um and i didn't realize actually i did realize last time but i was under consultant care even though i was like low risk um, because basically I had, so this, she's told me I'm going to be the same again. Um, it doesn't mean that I can't have the birthing centre. If everything's okay and my blood pressure doesn't go high in labour like it did last time, then I can have the birthing centre and water birth or whatever. Um, if it goes high, then I'll, there's only one pool room on the main delivery suite. So I'm hoping I will get that again like I did last time. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, so I think they're doing consultant-led care because my blood pressure went high in labour last time, they just want to keep an extra eye on it. She said, you're more likely to get high blood pressure in labour or like at the end of your pregnancy if it's your first baby. But then also I'm quite likely to get it because I've had it before. So they just want to keep an eye on it. It's mental because I've never had any issues with my blood pressure whatsoever. Didn't have any throughout my last pregnancy. I was like really, really super low risk. Might as well have been midwife led. Um... It was literally just when I went overdue, my blood pressure just like went through the roof and it stayed like that all the way through labour. Um, so that's what they want to kind of monitor this time and I'll probably get some extra appointments at the end or something. Um, but the yeah, the main reason for me being consultant led is because when I was 25, I had my first ever smear test and the it came back as like the highest level of like abnormality. Um, so I had to go and have the like, it's called a LEPS procedure if, you're, if you haven't heard about it. I had to go and have that done which is where they remove the abnormal cells from your cervix so it can leave your cervix like a little bit shorter so when I was pregnant with Joel they had to check um that my cervix was still the right length to be able to keep him in to term um otherwise they would have had to put a stitch in it I know quite a lot of it's quite common like a lot of people have had to have the stitch luckily mine was absolutely fine and I didn't have to have it but so I kind of wasn't expecting that to be an issue this time I thought they would would just be happy that it was fine from last time um but they said that they still want to check it again at about I think they check it at about 16 weeks or 20 weeks um, so I think, yeah, that's the other reason for being under consultant care. She just wants to have a little look at my cervix around that time and just check that it's still okay to carry to term without needing a stitch put in it. Um, apart from that, like, should hopefully be super low risk again, like I was last time. But yes, yeah, obviously a bit annoying that I'm under consultant care. But to be honest, I, I only saw a consultant once last time and then I saw the midwife. Um, so I kind of forgot that I was actually under consultant care because um, she was actually meant to have signed me off at 16 weeks. 
after she was happy with like my cervix length and stuff I don't think they will this time obviously because of the blood pressure issue they're just going to keep me under under the consultant the whole way through anyway I am properly going on now but I just wanted to update you after my booking appointment um so yeah everything else went okay they proper grill you I forgot how much they grill you um about they even ask you if like you own or you rent your house which I find like a bit irrelevant really but um yeah whatever but they grill you about like your alcohol your, like your drug use <laughs> yeah and I was kind of like yeah I do like my wine at the weekends like pre-pregnancy um so yeah but I, I just forgot that they did all of that because yeah even though it wasn't like ages and ages ago it was it was only like two years ago since I had my last one just under two years actually but it's amazing how quickly you forget like the kind of things that they ask you in the booking appointment um but anyway so yeah it all went okay but that's just an update like I will be consultant led um so yeah I will like I said catch you guys on Friday and that will be the end of this probably really 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 long vlog um but yeah catch you Friday <laughs>